Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh Rossi. Welcome to another Photoshop Dad tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're really gonna be focusing on the double exposure image, but you know, this image can be used for clients, for commercial work, movie posters, whatever. It's just a really cool image and it's really not that difficult to recreate. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you the before and after. This is what we're gonna be creating right here. It's made up of a, b a bunch of different pieces, but this is the original shot right here, which is kind of cool because it's like, you know, we're, we're gonna be transforming this within a matter of minutes. Now, once again, if you wanna follow along, just click the link below. I'm actually gonna include the uh, files, the follow along files. So if you wanna get those, just click the link below and follow along, okay. So what I've done is I've actually cut out this model already so you don't have to go through the pain of cutting her out. I will show you though how I did it. So first thing you need to do is go here and click on the pen tool and you're just going to cut out her hair and you can start anywhere. I'm gonna start down here and just follow the natural curvature of her hair. Make sure that you don't have any sharp edges. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, you basically drag and pull and then hold the option or alt key and you're just repositioning that little pointer. So once you've done that, just connect the dots, right click within the image and go make selection. Now I'm gonna feather this at one pixel, hit okay, and hit delete. Sometimes it'll delete the interior if you've done a mask like that, so just hit shift command I. That's gonna invert the selection and then you can delete. Now, you can delete or you can put a mask on. I know, I know, I could mask that, why don't I mask it? Reason is I'm just used to sometimes deleting the stuff that I know I'm absolutely not gonna use. So I know I'm not gonna use anything on the exterior. So I'm just gonna leave it at that, so Command D. But you'll see other masking techniques as we're gonna move along here. So you can see obviously there's this really sharp edge right here. So what we're gonna do is bring in your, go to the hair layer. And once again, I've included all these files so click below to get them. But the hair layer, it's just um, an image that I got off of Unsplash and I, I basically masked out uh, the hair. So we're gonna go to the model layer, and I'm actually gonna put this underneath the model layer, just call this my hair layer. And what we're gonna do is basically use these, we're, we're gonna add hair strands. So I'm gonna hit Command T and reposition this just a little bit, just like that. And you can already see that the hair is looking just a little bit more realistic here. So I'm gonna hit, hit OK on that. And you can see before and after. And I'm just going to warp this now, so go edit, transform warp, and I'm basically gonna warp it to the shape of the hair. Now this might be a little bit difficult sometimes. You gotta kind of play with it, just like this. Something like that, okay, I'm gonna hit enter. So here's the thing, I'm gonna do this around the whole image and that's how it's done. It's very simple, you basically put it, you know, you keep doing that and you copy this down, one more layer, see how there's nothing down there, and then you'll copy down one more layer, do something like that, and erase anything down here that you don't need, okay? So very quick, you know, you just wanna make sure that you have hair strands around all of the edges so that the hair looks realistic. Now as far as matching up the hair color, you don't really need to do that right now. If you were going to add hair strands for like a movie poster or some other client image, that's not a double exposure, then yes, you wanna match the hair color because you can see obviously it's a little bit like pink and purple here, um, but we're not gonna need to match that up right now. So anyway, for the sake of time, I've already done this and I've included this image right here. You can see the hair strands and it looks like a good cutout. Okay, now up top, you're not gonna worry about that. Okay, so drag in your image into a new document, which the document size here, you can just go file new and create a document there. But the document size that I'm using is 3351 by 2698. Now that's a little bit small, but this is just for the sake of presentation. You can all, always make it bigger, you know, 5,000 by whatever, but just so you know, this is the document size. So create a new document with those sizes, hit okay. Then I'm gonna drag my model into this image right here, over the top and we don't, oops. We don't actually need, we're gonna completely recreate this so we don't need the finished file anymore, okay. And then we're gonna bring in the different pieces of the image. 
Okay, so go to the stars under layer and I'm gonna add a mask. I'm just going to mask this area out right here. Make sure you're painting with black. We're gonna just mask that out, okay? Sort of like a split image here. Okay, next piece is we are gonna bring in another layer, which is our mountain layer. And this is gonna go over the top of the model. This is gonna start creating that really cool double exposure look. So from here, I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt, make this a clipping mask, just like that. And it's gonna be called Mountains, okay. Very simple, put a mask over this because we wanna reveal her face, the model's face a little bit. So click on the mask, make sure you're painting with your black brush and click B or go over to the brush. And we're just going to paint out like that. Now, when you get down about halfway, you're gonna start wanting to drop your opacity so you can blend things in a lot better and then just sort of dab around. Now, I am using the Wacom tablet, which makes things a lot easier. If you're not using Wacom tablet, no worries. I actually have had some success, like when I'm traveling or whatever and I forgot my Wacom, I can use the trackpad. So just bring it right under her chin a little bit so you're kind of seeing her neck. Something like that's cool. So it's already looking a lot better than initially with that, you know, with the whole mountain over the face. So that's looking pretty good. Now we do have this whole area down here that is not looking good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go down here to the model. And this is sort of an interesting thing. We, we All we need, there's no detail down here in this area. All we need is to paint in with a black brush. So I'm on my brush painting black at 100% opacity. And all we're doing is filling this in because realistically, look, without that layer on, it's just black. Okay, we're just filling in this area just like this. And I'm gonna go over here and fill it in just like that. Actually, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit right there. Now, the reality is it doesn't really matter because, check that out, we're not actually seeing the model or the details of the model. So then what you wanna do is put a mask over the model here and make sure you're painting with black. Make sure you're painting on the actual mask. Sometimes you might mess up and start painting on you know, the model. You don't wanna do that. So paint over the mask. And we're basically just gonna be following the line of this mountain. Now I'm doing this freehand. Um, I'm making my brush really small so you can kind of see the edges. It might, you know, it could even be smaller so the edges are sharper, just like that. And that might blend a little bit better. Okay, now you could do this freehand. What I've found is when I am doing this, when I'm going around mountains or rocks, I like doing it freehand just because rocks and mountains have jagged edges anyway. And so it takes kind of a minute with the pen tool. So I kind of just, like, like look at that, I kind of just guess and go around it and then I'm just erasing this. Now, if it doesn't look good, then I'll go back with the pen tool and be like, okay, let's actually do this, you know, the, the more precise way. But for the most part, I think it, I think it looks fine, you know? See, especially when you zoom out, you can't really tell. So same thing here. Okay, so when you back up, it's starting to look a lot better. You can see how the double exposure image is coming together where it looks really interesting. It's like the mountains are in the foreground, but then there's something in the background, there's a sky, whatnot. So there you have it. Okay, let's go back to our star's left image and let's bring this down. I'm actually gonna make this a little bit bigger, bring it down like that. And I, you know, I thought it was cool just to leave this here. It doesn't fully make sense. Like. <laughs> You could erase it if you wanted to. It actually probably looks better erased. So you can put that there and go hit S on the keyboard to go to your clone stamp tool. And I'm just gonna clone right here and just boop, paint that out. Okay, done, bam, easy. And let's just paint in a little bit of the stars up here. All right, so the next piece of this is we're gonna be painting the shadow over her eye. And it's very simple. We're just gonna create a blank Layer above, I'm just gonna call this shadow. And we're gonna leave it. We're not gonna change the blending mode, just leave it to normal. I'm gonna go hit B on the keyboard, go to my brush, go to my black brush and paint at 100% opacity. And now what we're gonna do is literally just do a few tries of this. So I'm just gonna paint a stripe right there. 
So the, the idea behind this is we want to create, a, we want to recreate as if you had, as if the light were just right on her eyes, it had like a strip of light. So you want to create a, um, an edge that isn't super sharp. You don't want to create something like, like that because that doesn't really make sense. That doesn't recreate what the light would actually look like. So I'm going to bring my brush up a little bit. I'm going to go down like this and then I'm going to follow the contour of the nose and then go back down like this. And then we're literally going to paint everything else just like this. Bam, 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 bam. Make sure everything's painted in all the way. Okay, so now you've created this really interesting look and you can go in and because you painted it at 100% opacity, you can make adjustments like this. You can I'm gonna raise that up a little bit. Then I'm gonna go hit E for my eraser. And the key to this is you wanna follow the contour of the nose. So it goes down here, then all of a sudden it contours up. This is how light works. And then you kind of bring it down that way, okay? Just like that. I'm gonna go back to my black brush and so bring it like that. Okay, perfect. Now it's gonna look a lot better when we make a few detailed adjustments like right here, we're gonna be painting black right there. All right, now let's bring down the opacity to about 90%, just like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because you can start seeing you know, some of her face details and it does create some interest. I'm actually gonna work on this mask just for Quick second more. Okay, so what you wanna do, before we add highlights, we're gonna go down to the shadow layer. We're gonna put a mask on this and we're going to reveal a little bit of the hair right here because we are gonna be painting some bright uh, highlights there. That looks good, okay. Then go up to the highlight layer. We're gonna pick, go to your brush and we're gonna pick like sort of an orange reddish color just like that. Make sure you are on a screen blending mode for this one and then you have a really big brush. Now we're just gonna sort of brush over the edge just like that. See how this is creating a really nice haze for the model and you could even make it bigger and see what that does. Might be a little bit too much but that's okay for now. Next we're gonna do another layer. Make sure it's clipping mask and it's gonna be another highlight layer. And this time I'm going to go to an overlay blending mode and I'm gonna make my brush really small and I'm gonna come over here in the edges. And actually, we're gonna make this a little bit lighter, just like that, that color. Okay, you're just gonna go around the edges like this. So when you're creating a haze, it's gonna have different levels. You're gonna have a really bright spot and then the, as it fades over, um, the colors are gonna not change, but they're gonna fade a little bit and it's gonna become less uh, powerful. So if you see here, that's kind of what I'm doing. This layer is really focused on the edges. You can see how that's looking realistic. And then this, this one is sort of just the haze over everything. And now let's do one more haze layer over the top of everything because this image right here has a little bit, the, the thing that we want to avoid with this is having a really sharp cutout. And that's kind of what it's looking like right here. So we're going to do two things. One is we're going to add a haze over the top and underneath the model above the sunset layer, we're gonna add a little bit more white just to sort of get these to blend in. So let's let's add another haze layer. So basically I'm doing a haze layer underneath and a haze layer over the top to get this to blend a little bit better. So let's go to my brush, painting with white, and then I'm gonna go to a overlay blending mode. I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of white, just right there. See how that's really sort of getting that to blend a little bit more. Now over the top, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create another screen blending mode and we're gonna paint with like, sort of like a red orange right here and see what this does. So I'm painting over the, the top of the whole entire image. Just like that, see how that's getting everything to blend a lot better. All right, so the next step is coloring. Let's drop the opacity just a slight bit on this. And let's put a color balance layer above everything. And we're going to add in a little bit of reds and yellows to the whole image. All right, so let's add some depth to this shot next, which would be using a vignette. So I'm gonna create a blink layer. 
and turn it to a soft light blending mode and we're going to paint with a black brush and we're just going to go I feel like this area needs to be a lot darker so we're going to darken this up over here and we're going to darken it down there so you can see that already created a really cool that's too much really cool look there maybe go a little bit more around the edges sort of feather that and then this layer is a little bit too hardcore here so I'm going to you can either mask it or actually I'll, I'll mask it. I'll put a mask over that and we're just going to paint out just a little bit at about 30% opacity here. Maybe a little bit less at 10% opacity. Okay. Something like that's cool. And then if you want to add some more coloring over the top, you can add saturation, you could add a color balance layer. Add some blues. A little bit of reds. And then add some highlights here. Maybe a little bit of yellows. A little bit of red highlights. So as a final piece, I think the only thing left is to add, it's a little bit too dark over here and I wanna add some uh, color behind her. So I'm gonna create a blank layer and just call this blue. And we're gonna go to an overlay blending mode. Now I'm gonna go over here and choose this sort of like lighter blue color right there. Make my brush really big and just slightly paint, just like that. So that's gonna add a little bit more depth, you know, and you can actually bring the opacity down just barely. So it's just barely showing. Something like that. So there you guys go. That's how you create a really cool double exposure type image. Now these techniques you can use on all types of different images and hopefully you downloaded the files and you learned, you know, you were, you were following along so you could learn how to do these things. So thank you guys again for watching. Check out some of the other videos and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.